at the age of thirty-two, you got nailed, had a terrible death. You call that a successful life? No. But we bow down to him. Baby, you can call me a superman. Hey yo, what's up everybody, welcome back to the channel, it's your boy Jesse Keegan and we are finally Jesse. So right about now we're going to do another reaction video, but before we get into the reaction guys I want to thank everybody out there who've been subscribing to the channel, you're the realest MVP and I also want to thank the people who've been giving us reaction videos, you're also really really amazing and not to forget the people who've been giving us amazing comments people who've been giving us comments that are so informative you guys are also super amazing so right about now what we're gonna do is so right about now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do another reaction video and this one was suggested by a lot of people and they suggested that we should go react to a man asked Sanguru if he believes in Jesus Christ and Sanguru answer will shock you let's find out what is it that shocks people about Sanguru's answer anyway uh, without any further ado guys let's get it Essentially in your life, this is all it is. What the world will throw at you, it is not hundred percent your choice. To some extent we can control, that's about it. World may throw anything at you, we don't know what it will throw at you. It may throw disease at you, it may throw death at you, it may throw bullets at you, it may throw shame at you, it, it may throw all kinds of things. But what you make out of it is hundred percent yours. Now, this one thing, if you take charge, no matter what world throws at you, you will turn it into your well-being. Then, where you go, what kind of situations in li you live, whether you go to heaven or hell, doesn't matter because whatever is thrown at you, you know you will turn it into well-being. This quality is what we are worshipping. This quality is what is worth worshipping because this is true with every one of us. If world throws nastiness, you will become nasty. World throws bitterness, you will become bitter. World throws anger, you will become angry. This is the way most human beings live because he lived above that. We said he is godlike. But what happened in their life, the physical events of their life if you look at it, it's one big tragedy. At the age of thirty-two, you got nailed, had a terrible death. You call that a successful life? No. But we bow down to him because it seems, we don't know, but we believe, or people have believed always, that even when he was nailed, he said, they know not what they're doing, forgive them. For that we bow down to him, not because he got nailed, because getting nailed is not a successful life, isn't it? But even if you nail him, he did not lose his quality. For that we bow down. So that's all that matters to us, whether they existed or not. That they are an inspiration for you, whether everything that's said about them is true or not. Even this is not your problem. You're not a historian, all right? You just need some icon to move towards a better way of existing for yourself, that's all. What does it matter? Krishna did not exist, Jesus did not exist, what does it matter to you? Two thousand years ago, whether a man lived or did not live, or it's just a figment of somebody's imagination, what does it matter? It is the quality that matters, isn't it? We recognize these qualities as great qualities, in some way trying to emulate them, to whatever extent one can, that's what we're looking at. Uh, when different people came to Krishna and were explaining about how they perceived their dharma, uh, this, this one particular person who was meek and uh, who took anything that came his way in total acceptance, and so he says that's his dharma. And Krishna says, uh, your dharma is that of the coward or that of the me, and uh, I'll let you pass. Whereas Jesus says, the meek will inherit uh, my kingdom. So what is the difference between what, how Krishna perceives uh, 
of that as meek and not performing their dharma, whereas Jesus says the meek will inherit my kingdom. One thing uh, that you should always consider why I'm going through all these elaborate stories of Krishna's life is uh, so that you perceive him in the right context. It's always very important that one perceives in what kind of situation and what kind of social realities one lived and why they spoke the way they spoke. <coughs> there is one aspect of the teaching which is of eternal nature which you will see whoever speaks they will speak in the same terms. But there is another aspect of the teaching which is relevant to the people who are sitting there at that moment. That relevance keeps changing from generation to generation. Not only from generation to generation, within the generation, also from person to person, from groups of people to groups of people, from societies to societies. It is a different reality. So, what kind of social realities did uh, Jesus live in and what kind of social realities did Krishna live in and what kind of social realities you are living in right now? We have to bring some kind of alignment to this tree if we have to understand this aspect. Let's uh, just take this that you brought up this meek thing now. One aspect where he sort of more substantiated this aspect of being meek is uh, if somebody slaps you on one cheek, show him the other cheek. You are definitely not capable of that. <laughs> How many of you are capable of this? Hmm? How many of you are capable of this that uh, if you are slapped on one cheek, you will show the other? Genuinely, how many of you are capable of this in your life? Nobody? You are? We know you. <laughs> huh? Better to run away. They may chase you and beat you. So, you are not capable of that. He was talking to his closest disciples when he was talking about sending them out to spread his message. He said, when you go out with this new message, if people come and slap you on one cheek, show the other. But that's not the teaching for all of you. Can you live by those guidelines? Can you? Now, uh, you know, before we consecrated the Dhyanalinga, I used to tell the brahmacharis, if you go outside, if somebody spits on your face, with a big smile, wipe it and come back. Don't do anything else. But now, in the last three, four years, I'm telling them, if somebody talks nonsense, you give it to him properly. Not because my perception of world has changed. My role in the world has changed. My perception of world has not changed in any way. But my role in the world has changed. So at that time, I told them, if somebody spits on your face, show them a happy face, wipe it and come back. Now I tell them, you stand up, you stand your ground and tell them what you have to tell them. Don't take any shit from anybody. Is this contradictory? It is not contradictory. Just acting as the situations demand to make yourself most effective in the conditions in your living in right now. So Krishna is living in a totally different kind of condition and he spoke differently to different people. Now, uh, if you take this, this 
still doesn't feel like a book to me. <laughs> now he's, uh, Amala picked something out of Gnana Yoga because she's a Gnana person. Now he picked something which is, which she thinks is very contradictory. Somebody else will naturally pick up something from the bhakti that he is talking about. If you pick, open the pages of bhakti or devotion that Krishna is talking about, he will sound very similar to Jesus. If you open the other pages, this is a completely different man. If you want, you just pick those bhakti yoga pages and read, he will sound very much like Jesus. But you pick the other pages and see, he is a totally different man altogether. Another thing we need to understand is Jesus is usually handicapped because of the kind of situation in which he is existing. He has no real freedom of speech. He mostly lived like a fugitive, here and there speaking to small groups of people. The moment he picked up little momentum, you know what they did to him. Krishna did not live in such a condition. He has an army behind him. All his friends are kings and emperors. He can speak what he wants. It's very different. Jesus is a fugitive. If he says one word more, his life is finished. And it happened that way. Krishna is not a fugitive. He is a kingmaker. Every king around owes something to him. He can call upon large armies to fulfill his purpose. So he is placed in a completely different situation. When it comes to the approaching the eternal, Jesus is just talking about the yoga of devotion, nothing else. Because one thing that's his way, he is unidimensional. He is just talking about one dimension of approaching the ultimate. He is just saying, just follow me, it will happen. It is devotion. Krishna is also saying the same things. He is saying, I am the way. I think Jesus said something like, you can only know my father through me. But I think he went further somewhere else and said, me and my father are one. But in that part of the world, uttering such a thing was total sacrilege. Anybody claiming that me and my father are one means that I am God. Such a claim will immediately bring death penalty in that part of the world. But here it was not so because any number of yogis have said it. And people treated them as gods because they experienced the divine in them. They really treated them as gods, they worshipped them as gods. So that was not a new issue in India. When Krishna said, I am the ultimate divine, people were not surprised or shocked or it was not a sacrilege because that was very much a part of people's knowing. They were very happy he has come when they are alive. Any number of yogis have said this. Well known ones and very minor ones. And I say minor in terms of knowing, social acknowledgement. They are great people within themselves. But socially in the world, they are very small people. Even those people have been worshipped as gods. You will see, you will see if you know Indian culture, if you go to villages, there will be one little yogi there. Only that village knows about him. They worship him as God with a regular form of worship as they would do it in a temple. Any number of yogis have such worship. So it was not new for him to claim, I am God. But for Jesus, it was totally out of place in that culture. He is saying, me and my father are one. He is very… brought him death. Any number of times people try, try to kill Krishna, but he is willing. But they try to kill him, not for these utterances, they tried to kill him for political and military reasons because he was involved in those affairs. 
Nobody ever tried to kill him because of what teaching he gave. They only tried to kill him for political and military reasons. So, when Krishna says, the way of the meek is way of inaction, I will let you pass. It's not of any, not of any great consequence to me. He is not putting down Jesus. He is just saying, it's a small way. It's just one narrow opening. I will let you pass. All right, you pass. He's not saying to so only to one man, he said, I turn my back. To everybody else, he said, I let you pass. But this is not for everybody. Everybody cannot go out in the world and show their cheeks to everybody else. There are some people who can do it. Yes? There are just a very few people who can do that if they are slapped on one cheek, genuinely show the other cheek. Not because they read it in Bible. Genuinely, they can show the other cheek to be slapped too. They are very, very few people. So he is saying, this is the way of inaction. But I will let you pass. It's just a narrow opening. Not everybody can go through this. That's all he is saying. He is not contradicting. He is just putting it in its right, right place where it belongs. Is this not the reality? Hmm? All of you will not pass through that doorway of showing both the cheeks and getting slapped on both sides. Isn't it so? It depends whom you are dealing with. If you are dealing with a very sensitive, compassionate person and at a moment he slapped one cheek, you show the other, then he will hug you and kiss you. Now you go and show other cheek to there are certain kind of people on the street, you show the other cheek, they will smash your head. Yes or no? Aren't there such, haven't you met such people? Every day you meet them. Wow! Such an amazing message right there. Such an amazing message. Uh, Essentially in your life, this is all it is. Such an amazing message right there by Sanguru, man. I mean, um, I like the way he kind of explains things. He has this wisdom that comes with him. I mean, um, he really explained it nicely, but I didn't find anything shocking, though. I mean, this is just things that probably everybody would know and stuff like that. But I like the part where he said that... Um, whether Jesus existed or not existed, the thing that really st stood out from from him is that he never lost his quality. You get it? Uh, when he was nailed at the cross, and uh, when the the is it the Pharisees asked him like, um, what are we, um, like, are, are you just gonna let them? do that to you i think the, the, the is it the disciples or the pharisees or something i'm not really sure about it but he went on and said that um uh, forgive them because they do not know what they're doing you get it i mean that's the most um the most humble thing i've ever heard you get it i mean it's just like uh saying like somebody's slapping you and then you turn out the other cheek and then it slaps you and then you go like May God forgive you. Anyway, but what I'm trying to say is that since um, the values did not go, since the values did not like fade away, he had the utmost values. But would you do that in the daily? Would you would you would you let somebody slap you and then just let that person go scot free? I just want to know from you guys. I mean, is it is it applicable in real life situation? Because this. Um, this right here looks kind of um, looks kind of uh, like a fairy tale type of stories, or maybe like uh, stories that um, you may think they are not well um, well groomed, or maybe stories that are fictional. You get it? I mean, just let me know in the comment section. Would you let somebody slap you? And then turn around and give him the other cheek and slap again and then just let the guy go or would you react to that just let me know in the comment section below anyway sanguru actually explained it in a very very nice way so he kind of gave comparison in between jesus and uh is it vashni or krishna i mean there are two different type of people here which uh jesus was kind of 
like forgiving, but again, he was uh, he he talked about there's a name he mentioned uh, that he could like it's like he didn't have a freedom of speech again. He didn't have a sp freedom of of doing what he was sent here to do because when he wanted to say when he went on and say something against the the Pharisees they would come for him and, 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 and probably and that's what happened to him, to, uh, to him he was crucified because of not going uh, saying things that the Pharisees didn't want uh, him to say or something like that you get it. but now on the other side of uh, Krishna he had an army and whatnot, and he wouldn't let anybody just you know jokingly um, uh, make him feel um, make him not get uh, like he wouldn't let somebody step on his feet if you understand he would just react into that if you slap him he's going to slap you back if you do this you're going, I mean it's something that it was so uh, um, um, like like what we call like retaliation you understand so I mean there are two different type of people but anyway such a nice message such kind of message you kind of learn and you kind of um, try to broaden up your mind and stuff like that such a good wisdom over here and I mean nothing shocking so far if you feel like I reacted to this video in a better way just give me a thumbs up and don't forget to go down in the comment section tell me exactly what you feel about my reaction and what do you feel about this video here of a man asked Sanguru if he believes in Jesus Christ and Guru answer will shock you I mean nothing really shocking but there are some um, you know some 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 things they say that they kind of um, you may want to agree with Sanguru but again you would want to not agree with Sanguru just let me know in the conversation what do you think about uh, the whole thing do you agree with him would you let somebody slap you and then give him the other cheek just let me know in the comment section below are you going to do that uh, just like uh, the way uh, Jesus was teaching and, and what not I mean just let me know in the comment section below anyway guys thank you thank you so much and the most important thing guys don't forget to subscribe to our channel they make you for subscribing they make you for the motivation to do a lot of videos and to give you a better better content and last but not the least we're gonna see you in the next video and peace out